Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course Aspects of Biochemical Engineering and the last lecture I tried to concentrate on uh, this uh, uh, kinetics of enzyme catalyzed reaction using the free enzymes and I tried to explain that what do you mean by enzymes. I told you that enzymes are basically protein molecules but not necessarily they are protein molecules. Some of, uh, due to the advancement of organic chemistry it is possible to produce some enzyme synthetically. But uh, and then I explained that what is the nature of the enzyme, what is the nomenclature of the enzyme, then how substrate and enzyme they interact with each other to give the product. Then I explained the how Michaelis maintained that proposed the uh, rate, uh, rate of the enzymatic reaction with respect to substrate, then how Briggs and Heldem uh, they, pro they justify this uh, Michaelis maintained equation with the help of reaction kinetics. Now later on I discuss that um, you know, what are the limitations of this Michaelis maintain equation and what are the different significance of uh, Km and Vmax value. Now this lecture I am concentrating on uh, inhibition of enzymatic reaction because inhibition is a very important aspect as far enzymatic reaction is concerned because it has several applications in the chemical and biochemical industries. Now I can I can I can I can give, give you a typical example. The pesticide, as you know, it is a very complex molecule and it's very difficult to estimate in normal analytical techniques. So we still have to use some kind of sophisticated techniques like HPLC and other things to find out the concentration of pesticide. Now enzymatic reaction can be used inhibition. We can use technique used to find out the concentration of the pesticide molecule. Another application that we have in the medical science, I, uh, <laughs> the sulfur drug we use in the day to day life uh, for curing some infection diseases. So that also uh, can be done, I shall explain to you how it can be done with the help of inhibition. So <clears throat> let me start this lecture with this uh, information that what do you mean by inhibition? The inhibition uh, inhibitor a compound that binds the enzyme and reduces their activity. Now, what do you, in a simple way, what I can explain? The inhibition means retardation of velocity of reaction that causes the enzyme catalytic process slowly. That is, inhibition doesn't mean stopping of the velocity of reaction. It means the inhibition rate of reaction is inhibited. So there are two type of inhibition. One is reversible, another is irreversible. Now, what do you mean by reversible inhibition? That means it dissociates easily. That the, that uh, suppose E plus I is their inhibitor. That uh, reversible means this is E I, and again it will go back. That is the, the reversible. And irreversible means E I this form E I. This is the, this is like this E I that we have. Now irreversible is stable complex and reduce the enzyme activity. So what uh, one one thing I want to highlight in case of re reversible inhibitor, uh, it is possible to restore some of the enzyme activities. Now uh, enzyme inhibition may be of th three types. Uh, the one is called competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition, and uncompetitive inhibition. This is the pictorial representation of the inhibition. The how uh, how this is usually the normal case. This is the enzyme molecule, and this is the substrate, and this is the active site. Now uh, this is substrate should uh, sit at the active site, and you can see the configuration here of the substrate and active site. They are same, and that is why they give the product. Now in case of competitive inhibition, what is happening? This inhibitor has similar configuration with respect to substrate. So uh, it can compete uh, that both the substrate and inhibitor they can compete for the active site. Now in case of non-competitive inhibition you see that uh, they form the trimolecular complex. This is inhibitor, this is substrate and due to the binding of the inhibitor the configuration of the active site changes. That is why the substrate cannot sit here properly. 
and if, since it cannot sit here properly, it cannot give the product. And on competitive side, this is uncompetitive inhibitor binds here, and and you know substrate uh, they find here that they cannot give the product. So these are the the, the different three different uh, inhibitor that we have. Now let me uh, go in details. So what do you, how we can explain the uh, this uh, competitive inhibitor? Now if you look at competitive inhibitor that E is the enzyme, am I right? S is the substrate and form ES complex and then it produce E plus B. But and that, uh, that I, for E also react with I, I is the inhibitor and it form EI complex. When EI complex is there, it will not give, produce any product. But when ES complex is there, it will produce product. Now, now competitive inhibition may be of two types. One is called completely competitive inhibition and this partially competitive inhibition. Completely competitive inhibition means that when substrate and inhibitor, they, 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 they compete for the same active site. And what is the partially competitive inhibitor? That inhibitor binds other than the active site and then it will not allow the substrate to sit at the active site. So it will change the configuration of the active site. So that the reaction will not take place. So, so this is how we can define completely competitive inhibition and completely uncompetitive inhibition. Now, how you can determine whether it is competitive? So best way of determining if you plot V by S. V by S, in the, this is, is no inhibition, am I right? And this is competitive inhibition. This is competitive inhibition this is like this. Now, if you, th this will be more clear if you plot a lime over bark plot, 1 by V versus 1 by S. Then this is no inhibition, this is no inhibition, and this is competitive inhibition. And the competitive is like this. Now, we can remember I told you this intercept is 1 by V max. So, 1 by V max is remain constant, but this slope changes. And since the slope changes, what is this intercept? Well, this intercept is 1 by km. And that means one due to inhibition, 1 by km decreases. 1 by km decreases means km value increases. And if the km value increases, your rate of reaction decreases. Now, this if you analyze this equation that you know kinetics, then we find that equation for the competitive inhibition is this V equal to V max S km. Uh, 1 plus i by k i plus s. Now, here I want to highlight if i if you put 0, then this will be 0, then this equation will be becoming the Michaelis Menten equation. Now, examples I, to, I was talking about sulfur drug, am I right? The sulfur drug is nothing but sulfur uh, amide, acts as a competitive inhibitor with respect to this para amino benzoic acid. Now, here you can see. Uh, this is how uh, the, the, that para amino benzoic acid they acts with this and uh, then this form, form uh, with the glutamic acid it, it forms the folic acid and this folic acid is very much essential for the uh, survival of the bacteria cells. Now in presence of the sulfur drug then what is a, this is the sulfur drug then this uh, enzyme, that enzyme molecules that binds with the sulfur drug and and then it will not re it will not react with the glu glu glutamic acid to form folic acid since there is no formation of folic acid so your bacteria will be killed this is how sulfur drug works now next is the competitive non competitive inhibition this is the and in case of non competitive inhibition one important aspect is the tri molecular complex formation i can explain to you e plus a is equal to es then, uh, then I equal to EIS, here, here E plus uh, I equal to EI, IES equal to EIS. So, so this trimolecular complex is formation, but here is same as your competitive inhibition, ES complex will give E plus product, am I right? So this is the difference that we have between the competitive and non-competitive inhibition. So here if you, look, if you look at picturally that I, that inhibitor binds other than the active site, then it change the configuration of the active site so that your substrate molecule cannot react or you know it can sit here active site is this set but it will not give any kind of product molecule. So inhibitor can bind here and substrate can bind here it will not give any kind of like this. Now they, here also there is a term called no, partially non-competitive inhibition. <coughs> what do you mean by that? 
partially non cavitative inhibition means in normal case yes will be produce the enzyme and product am i right but in case of partial competitive inhibition product formation also will take place from the uh, triple uh, tri molecular complex then we call it partially non competitive inhibition now the, if you plot the michael that you know that uh, v by V by S plot, then it will nature is like this. This is no inhibition, this is non competitive inhibition. So, here v may, I can, we can see it V max value is changing. This is V max dash and this is V max. Now, if you plot uh, the line of a back plot, then the plot will be like this. This is in case of no inhibition, this is non competitive inhibition. So, we can we can uh, this equation is coming like this. B equal to Vmax uh, S 1 plus I by K I K M plus S. Now, here also if you put I equal to 0, then this will be 1 and then it will be approaching towards Michaelis Menten equation. Now, this is how it can be picturally represented. The heavy metal uh, binds with the enzyme cystinal SH group of the enzyme and change the configuration the conformation of the active site that blocks the catalytic activity. Now, if this uh, that mercury molecules when bind this side, then you can see the how active site changes. This is how your enzymes will be inactivated. Now, there is the another inhibition called uncompetitive inhibition. What do you mean by uncompetitive inhibition? That that uh, ES complex binds with inhibitor and and from EIS complex, but here <coughs> that ES that E that E cannot binds with I from EI complex and uh, EI can cannot find the di tri molecular complex. The uncompetitive inhibition binds with the ES complex only, not not with the EI complex. Am I right? So this cannot be uh, find bind. There is no inhibitor uh, that the affinity for the enzyme itself. The uncompetitive enzyme inhibition scheme can be. This can be represented like this. This is I is the inhibitor and substrate, and this is this is this cannot bind here. I individually that I cannot bind. When substrate bind with the enzyme, then and only then inhibitor to bind. When substrate doesn't bind here, this cannot be binding. So, uh, the nature of the plot lime of a bark plot is like this that uh, nature of uh, V by this is V. If you, if you look at uh, this is V versus S plot and we uh, this is no inhibition, but this is non-competitive inhibition. Now, if you look at here, this is non-competitive inhibition, this is no inhibition. So, here what is happening that V max and K m value both decreases. And in, in case of uncompetitive inhibition, and this equation also, this case also, B can be expressed like this. Here also, if we put I equal to 0, then B will be becoming Michaelis Menten equation. Now, this is the example that we have <coughs> that uh, ethylene glycol in presence of alcohol dehydrogenase and subsequent tests uh, we produce the gly glyxolic acid this acts as a poisoning effect but when uh, this uh, uh, foamy pi joules uh, that is uh, anti joules are present uh, they are ethanol presence then uh, this uh, uh, binds uh, that uh, this uncompetitively and this will not produce any kind of uh, glyxolic acid so this is how uh, how the uh, bad effect uh, uh, they can be removed Now, this is uh, this is summarized in this particular table that uh, this is purely competitive inhibition and partially competitive inhibition. Both the cases the same thing Vmax unchanged came increases, but in case of partially non competitive inhibition and purely competitive non competitive inhibition and partially non competitive inhibition Vmax decreases came unchanged here also Vmax decreases came unchanged, but in case of uncompetitive inhibition Vmax decreases came also decreases this you should remember. Now, 
And there is another interesting thing is that there is substrate inhibition during the enzymatic reaction that uh, uh, this is how, how it is take place when there is the excess of substrate. The excess of substrate binds with the active site what I have is showing here. When, uh, when more substrate is the accumulated to the active site, no product formation will be there. Only one substrate is bind, this will give the product. This is like this E plus S, yes, and um, this will give the P plus S. And when you have uh, the E S S, it will not give any kind of product. More than one substrate bind with the active site, that is mean just uh, one, and the substrate inhibition scheme is represented like this. And this is kind of example of uncompetitive inhibition. Now this is <coughs> this is actually the case. Uh, in case of normal uh, BYS, we have uh, this is the no inhibition. But in case of uh, substrate inhibition, this will be like this. So your after after some uh, when we keep on increasing the substrate concentration, the velocity of the reaction decreases. And this action exp that expressed by V equal to V max S came S plus S square by K S. This uh, this uh, this uh, reaction can be explained. And came value is the E S by E uh, S complex E S plus S equal to E S S complex that we have shown similar to the uncompetitive inhibition. Now this is the example that I have given you. That is, in case of alcohol dehydrogenase is used to convert ethanol to acetaldehyde at a higher concentration, more than 500 millimoles of ethanol substrate inhibit the reaction is observed forming the dead end complex. So this is the normal reaction that we have, but more substrate is uh, the, uh, there, then this catalytic reaction would not take place. Now there is a there is a term called irreversible uh, inhibition. Uh, irreversible inhibition binds with the active sites of the enzyme, and uh, after formation of uh, this EI complex, it will not go back. And uh, so covalent bond usually form between the inhibitor and enzymes. And inhibitor which shows the high affinity of for enzymes. Dissociation constant is greater than. 10 to the power minus 8 moles inverse is regarded as irreversible. Unlike reversible inhibitor, irreversible determinant is progressive and will increase with time until either the, in the all inhibitor or enzymes are used up forming the enzyme inhibitor complex. So uh, all inhibitor until unless irreversibly they bind with the enzyme, then, uh, then, uh, then uh, the, the inhibition will keep on going on. And then, when all enzymes they bind with the uh, the substrate, then the inhibition effect will not be uh, work that you know in the system. That is the that, that is uh, what you call irreversible inhibition. Now, one I told you when I discussed uh, the Michaelis maintaining equation that one important uh, that uh, that uh, limitation is that Michaelis maintaining equation discuss one substrate and one enzyme, uh, but you know it, it doesn't discuss that uh, two substrate one enzyme. Now, if you look at uh, that, most of the uh, biochemical reaction, particularly in the metabolic pathways, you will find most of the reaction is taking place in presence of the cofactors, and uh, and so since uh, most of the in presence of the cofactor, uh, initially in the last lecture I showed you, apo enzyme plus cofactor is a hollow enzyme. That means in presence of the cofactor, only the enzymes will be activated. So, but the, so normal case that it is an example of enzyme catalytic reaction is an example of a two substrate and one enzyme. Now, question: How how we can explain? So, this is the possible scheme that we I try to explain that you know how two substrate me mechanism can be explained. E plus S one it produces E S one. E S plus S two E S two. E S1 plus E1, E S1 plus S1, this form the trimolecular complex, E S2 plus S1, trimolecular, E E S1, S2, and whatever E S1 is there, that gives the product and enzyme. And this is how it picturally, it, we can explain like this, that you know, one substrate sit here, then, um, then your, your second substrate sit here, and when both the substrates sit here, it gives the product. This is what happens in case of coenzyme. 
Now, uh, when we analyze this uh, particular uh, reaction scheme, we will come across this kind of derivation that uh, the k equal to k is the rate constant, E0 is the initial enzyme concentration. Now, here uh, E0 will be what? E0 equal to E plus ES1 plus ES2 plus ES1 plus S2. So, this is the combination of all these things we call considered as the E0. So, this is called bound enzyme, this is called free enzyme. And then this equation will be becoming the Michaelis Menten equation if we assume that the V max star equal to E k into E0 is S2 and S2 plus k1 and k k1 star equal to this. Now, in this equation, if you see uh, the S2 term is there, and if you put S2 is constant and S1 is varied, then what will happen if S2 is constant? k is constant, E0 is constant and k1, k12 is constant. So, I can assume V max, V max star is constant. Now, here also if H2 constant and then everything is constant. So, I can assume k1 star is constant. Am I right? So, <coughs> now in the, in the second case, if we assume H2 is very large as compared to a k1, uh, uh, 1, 2 and then what is happening that uh, uh, the, if it is very large, then I can ignore this. If we, I ignore this, then this this will cancel. Then V max equal to k into E zero, that is a constant. Now <coughs> k one also uh, is the will be becoming becoming this I can ignore as compared to the this S S will can, can cancel S two S two will cancel and k one star will be equal to k two one. So <coughs> this is the two substrate. A model will approach towards the single substrate model uh, b uh, when we assume two different cases. One case you, do, you assume H2 is constant, and another is the case the H2 is much higher as compared to S1. Now, uh, let me discuss the, uh, 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 the coenzyme that uh, how participate in the reaction, that reaction kinetics how can be explained. Now, the, 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 this, uh, the participation of the cofactor in is a one or two substrate, uh, this is the enzymatic as depicted in the picture that you, you see that uh, this is the substrate and this is the H2 is the substrate, this is the cofactor and then uh, this is uh, this is cofactor binds here, it makes the change of the active site so that we will we'll get the product and the coenzyme and the enzymes that we have. Now, this we can express as that V equal to K into E0, e, e, S and e, e, C and Cs, Cs plus Km plus C into Kc, K, the C is the cofactor concentration. Now, if S is fixed or S is constant and if K is much smaller as compared to Kc, then if it is much smaller, then I can, I can ignore that, I can ignore that. So, then what will happening? that it will follow the first order kinetics. This is will uh, the, 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 the k, k into then V will be equal to equal to k into E0 into C. So, since, since it is constant, so we can the, the it can follow the first order kinetics with respect to C. Now, if C is very large, then I can ignore the, uh, this, uh, this is uh, this is this, then what is happening that this Cs I can ignore that, then the CS, CS will cancel, then V will be, uh, will be t the tends to V max, uh, that uh, v, the k, k, k into E0, v, v will be what? K into E0. Now, it is, that means it is equal to constant. That means it is independent of C. If C is very high, then we can assume this is independent of C. So, in this particular uh, presentation, I try to discuss uh, the inhibition aspects. I told you inhibition is a very important aspect as well as for enzyme catalytic reaction take place because it has uh, a lot of application in the chemical and biochemical industry, particularly for analytical purpose. I shall, I shall show you some problem that how we can solve the, uh, how we can determine the concentration of pesticides present in the in a sample 
and uh, this uh, I, I, I showed you how this can be used as a drug but I have given the example of sulfur drug. There are uh, different type of inhibition that we have. We have reversible inhibition, we have inhibi reversible re inhibition. Reversible inhibition some of the activity we can we can we can get back but irreversible, irreversible inhibition uh, we lost the total activity of the enzymes. Then uh, whatever inhibition is that broadly it can be classified into three types. One is competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition, uncompetitive inhibition. Now in case of non-competitive inhibition uh, uh, with the Vmax remain constant and Km increases, non-competitive inhibition Vmax decreases and Km remain constant but in case of uncompetitive inhibition both Vmax and Km value decreases. And then I try to explain how uh, the, uh, the, the two substrate model can be explained because the major limitations of the Michaelis maintain equation is this it is a single substrate model and two substrate model we, I, I try to discuss and I also discuss under what circumstances two substrate models tends to the single substrate model and also I discuss how the coenzyme uh, and the reactions in the enzymatic rea reaction can be expressed. Thank you very much.